Hey, what is going on guys? Today we're taking a look at another something very different and unusual here on my channel because this is a kit from Plum. I've taken a look at maybe one or two Plum kits in the past, but they don't make a ton of kits, so I haven't really reviewed all that many of them, so you guys have also maybe never built any Plum kits before. This is from what is basically their version of Frame Arm, so they have a few different kits out in this line. This is the Pla Act line. This would be the non-scale Sonata armor decoration version here as you can see it has a really cool style to it and again I've never built one of the kits from this particular line so I'm definitely looking forward to checking it out and let's go ahead and do that together starting with the box So this box art just looks super cool with the blood moon there in the back and the robot getting that perfect balance of it's like a little bit kind of chibi proportions so it's a little bit cute but still got that mean look to it and some very cool armor going on there and that nice weapon as well. On the ends of the box you got basically the same thing there you can see another look at that and on the bottom of the box we can see what the actual kit is going to look like all built and painted up it looks like you got an option part there for the face you can see some action posing here the posability of it does look pretty nice for again it being a sort of uh, somewhat chibi design and there's the weapon and all these really cool markings on there I'm guessing we're going to have some water slides for those and here's how it's gonna look on the opposite side there it is just front and back all painted up and everything got some nice shading and everything going on on that so very nicely painted here's just a look at the frame so again it's very similar to the architect frame sort of if you've built any frame arms kits and list price for this 3,500 yen, so not all that bad at all, around 30, 35 dollars for this. As you can see, not a huge box, and I don't expect the kit to be all that big, but for a non-Bandai kit, that's not too bad a price at all. So we got a couple things in here. I just want to first take a look at the water slide decals, and these look very nice. The gold is not that like bright and shiny of a gold, uh, so if, if you were wanting like a super gold decals for this. Unfortunately not, but then you got some black ones on there and a little bit of blue as well, but interesting color for the gold anyway. Here we got a little advertisement for the Pla Act line, which will be useful because, again, I've never built any of these before. And here's the Plum Shop as well, it tells you exactly where it is. That's useful, I guess next time I'm in Tokyo, hopefully I can someday go to Tokyo again and I may have to pay a visit there. But here's some other ones from the line. So as you can see, uh, the, most of them have this kind of samurai styling going on with them. And this one appears to be actually, I guess I didn't make this connection, but it's the decorative armor version. But anyway, it's, it's a variant of this one, which is the second one in the line actually. So this kit technically has been out for a while, just this is a new version of it. So anyway, taking a look at the manual here, it looks like it's one of those manuals where it's going to be pretty short here. So on this side, we've got the color guide right there, a couple of sample action poses, the decal marking guide for where all those cool markings are gonna go. And then the inside here, we've got our parts list, and construction, but it does look pretty simple. So nothing really too much else to see with that. Let's just go ahead and check out the runners. So first up, we got a pretty massive sheet of poly caps here, which is not good to see as it looks like. A lot of the joint parts are just made up of poly caps. You hate to see that, but we'll see how that actually turns out on the kit. Then in that same medium gray color, we have all the parts for our frame separated on the A runner and the B runner, of which we have two of the B runner. So that'll be like parts for the arms and legs. The A runner, I'm guessing it would be like parts that you can see is for the hands and for the hips and probably some body frame parts in there as well. Then on runner A, we get into our armor parts. We've got two of this A runner. The red color is in that kind of very cheap looking red plastic that I don't like. If you guys have been watching my channel for a while, you know that this particular color of red is a very common color to see for red color kits. I just don't like it because it does end up looking kind of cheap, but we'll see how it looks on the finished kit anyway. We do have some more of that here on the B runner as well. As you can see, there's our handle piece or like the main piece for the weapon. Then runner C switches it up to this kind of cream color, off-white color here. And runner D is our few pieces here in yellow, which will look really nice when these are actually painted in gold, I gotta say, but there you go. So that is gonna be it, guys. Not a ton of parts with this kit, and as you can see, it's gonna be relatively simple, straightforward construction for this. So let me go ahead and get a bit all built up, and then we'll see how it looks. 
Alright guys, so here it is all built up and I've gotta say for once I'm a little bit disappointed which is strange because you guys know me, I'm normally a very positive person, I always like to find the positive points about models and because normally any negative points that model kits have are pretty easily fixable or they're just things, I mean, that are just kind of normal issues of model kits like having seam lines and things like that but with this one I gotta say I was a little bit disappointed definitely while building it. And I just want to make this point because I feel a lot of people often forget this, but there's Bandai quality and then there's kind of everything else. Bandai quality is just so good that it's what we kind of come to expect, those of us who build mostly Bandai models, that when you're building other stuff it is easy to get disappointed by things, but you just have to remember that Bandai is just kind of a whole different thing. And that definitely doesn't mean that companies like Kotobukiya or Wave or Hasegawa kits aren't good. They're also very good, but I just gotta say that this one feels another two or three steps lower on the totem pole of like uh, model kit company quality ranking anyway. And it's not the first plum kit that I've built and I don't remember feeling like this after building the other couple of plum kits that I've built which were super detailed. This one not only is it lacking a detail but there's also a lot of weak points and everything. And so for this review I'm going to be doing something that I don't normally do and I'm going to actually glue a couple pieces as we're going through this because yeah yeah and yeah. So in order to show you guys the articulation and also just kind of be able to handle the kit and pose the kit and not having these parts constantly falling off, it's just going to be much easier for me to just glue a couple of these pieces. Mostly the front and back skirts are the worst, but the face mask also tends to fall off pretty easily. Luckily that's really kind of about it. There's not too much else, at least so far at this point that is coming off easily. But now that that's sorted, let's go ahead and talk about some of the articulation here first. Now there's a lot of polycap use in this and a lot of exposed polycaps. That's one of the other big problems that I have with this kit. The elbow joints, that's polycaps. These gray bits that you see here poking out the front, that's a polycap here that holds on the side skirt. It, for whatever reason, they made the polycap extend all the way out of the armor there. The neck, that's all one polycap, which if you build a lot of HGs, that's pretty normal, but it's a pretty large piece there and one that depending on the pose is going to be very easily seen so you're probably if you're planning on painting you're going to want to paint that and if you guys have ever tried painting polycaps you know that that's always not the easiest thing to do also here the knee joints also polycaps so that's a big polycap right there uh, exposed on the back side of the knee and while these shoulder parts don't come off super easily they're not very tight on there either so they're just plugged right onto the side there and as you can see you got multiple hard points here around on the kit so i think you could definitely do some customizing with this the inner frame skeleton that this is working off of which as I mentioned before is kind of similar to the frame arms line so it'd be kind of similar like to compare it to the architect frame from Kotobukiya. It's pretty cool and works pretty well except for the over reliance on polycaps in the joints and there's also seam lines on every section there up on the bicep seam line on the forearm although it's mostly hidden by this armor piece there's a little bit of seam line on the forearm frame the thigh frame which is the entire thigh there there's no armor to cover that up so a big seam line on that seam line on this front section right here here, seam line on the side of the leg which is mostly covered up there's a little bit there and there seam line on the side of this shoulder armor which again is also kind of covered up by this but you're probably going to want to remove that as it is still gonna be visible and then seam line on the top of the head going all the way across the top of the head there also you'll notice that it's missing quite a bit of color apps on the front skirt there is supposed to have a gray section in the middle white sections there on the side this part here on the forearm is supposed to be white the top of the foot is supposed to be white and even the eyes, for whatever reason, that part is also molded in white when I think if that part was molded in black or gray or something it would have been nicer. Now obviously you're meant to paint the kit, that's not that big of a deal. I would not normally criticize a kit too much for its color accuracy and I usually don't. Just because of model kits there's always going to be an understanding that there's going to be some paint required so it's not really something I would normally point out except for the fact that some of these parts are parts that could have very easily been separate pieces and the part count on this kit is so low I feel like they could have made some more parts with this. But again, it's not Bandai, so you shouldn't set your expectations too high. But then again, just want to let you guys know, for those of you who are wanting to get this kit, if you don't plan on painting it, I want you to have an idea in mind of what you can expect from this. Now, as for the, art for the articulation, it is actually quite nice. So the head articulation goes all the way up to there, down to there, the shoulder uh, joint, this whole shoulder, like side of 
of the torso moves out like that, which is also one big polycap. So that like gray part that you can see is the part that's actually like moving out to the side. That's a big polycap there. Oh yeah, and I almost forgot this part here on the back of the body also tends to fall off pretty easily there if you touch that. The upward movement of the shoulder would be a lot more except that it's running into the head. So if you have the head, like depending on the pose, you can bring the arm up farther, but like the shoulder armor is colliding there with the head. Otherwise, as you can see, the arm is just plugged in via a ball joint. So you have some rotation there, rotation at the top of the arm, nice double joint with the full bend there at the elbow. The hand is just on a ball joint there as well. In midsection, we have some rotation as it's just connected on a ball joint there, but you do also have a pretty nice ab crunch so you can bring the whole thing forward there like that. So the separation of this armor actually is like quite nice for doing the ab crunch there. So it's a pretty ingenious design of the frame there in the torso. The only thing is then when you're trying to move it back, this back part gets stuck on this, so you kind of have to maneuver that around that there. The front skirts are pretty standard. They're just connected via ball joints there in the middle. There's no detail up underneath those. The side skirts as well. Yep, there goes that part keeps falling off. The side skirts will move up and down. So not only are they connected via a ball joint, but then there's also a hinge. This part will just be able to rotate up and down, just rotating on that poly cap there. And the back skirt can actually move side to side and up and down there like that, which is pretty nice. The hips are strange because they're connected via a ball joint, but there's also another ball joint here at the top of the thigh. So you can see like you can move the leg around without actually moving that uh, hip, like the top of the thigh, the top of like the hip connection part there. But even still, you're only able to bring the leg out so far before you're going to be popping off one of those polycap ball joints there. Otherwise, we can bring the leg up pretty far to the front there. A nice double joint in the knee is going to give you a pretty good bend there for that. Basically 180 degrees. It's not exactly, but just because of the armor, but you can pretty much get 180 degrees out of that as much as we would understand a 180 degree bend for a knee. And then the ankle joints are also utilizing a ball joint and a swinging joint there. So you're able to move those plenty forward and back, up and down side to side without popping off this piece of armor, side to side, and lest I forget, also another seam line right down the middle of the foot there, and the same for the back piece. Now there is separate pieces for the front and back of the foot armor, but the center piece is the same, so you won't get any toe bend there with that, unfortunately, and there's what it looks like up underneath the feet, basically no detail. So while the kit obviously has its issues, the articulation is overall quite good, but let's check out the accessories. Maybe that's something to get excited about. For hand options, we've got the set of open hands, which I've got there on the kit, which do actually look quite nice. We do also have a set of holding hands, uh, so I guess fixed posed hand options, that's not too bad. Actually got two option parts here for the face. For the face mask, this little white piece white, which I actually broke and already had to glue back together, so be careful with that, it's very thin. And also this piece here, which is a clear part that's supposed to go in to cover the eyes, I just didn't put it in there yet just because I just thought you guys would be able to see the eyes easier without that. And then it's weapon, which is just this simple polearm style weapon there with the white piece for the blade, and it, which it is quite sharp, I will say, careful with that. And then you have this little connector piece, which is basically what you're gonna use to mount this onto his back. You slide that into there and it's very tight. I would not recommend doing this uh, once this is painted because you're just gonna be scratching all that paint off. You can plug this into his back or back skirt. I think probably the back makes more sense. And that just plugs onto there like that. And that's it for the accessories. So not really a lot. And to give you guys an idea of the size of this, here it is compared with a 144 scale HG Gundam kit. So you can see it's basically about the height of an HG, if not slightly shorter. Very different proportions, of course, but it's not a very big kit. Now, as we're trying out some poses and wrapping up the review here, there is one more little thing to complain about, and that is the fact that the holding end doesn't actually hold the weapon all that well. The weapon, the one weapon that it has, and the one set of holding hands that it has, the weapon is actually loose in the hand, so they couldn't even make the holding hands for this kit to be able to hold on to that without issue. So you will have to do something with that. And that's a very easy thing to, to fix. You know, just use a little bit of tape or a little bit of putty or something just in the hand there to give it a tighter grip on that. Not that big a deal, but it's just kind of one more thing to a list of kind of a lot of, it's like death by a thousand cuts with this kit. The red plastic is ugly. It's missing a lot of color app straight out the box. It's got a lot of seam lines that it doesn't hold the weapon well. It's got parts that are falling off all over the place. And with all that said, you would think that I would just not recommend this kit to anyone, but I'm not going to 
completely not recommend that kit. I would say it is still, a, at the end of the day, a really cool design. And it's a really interesting design. That's what drew me to it in the first place. And I think if you just put a little bit of love into the kit, it's going to make for a very beautiful kit when it's all said and done. Everything's all painted and you've got the water slides included in the kit. Throw the water slides on there. It is going to look good when it's all done. But if you're getting this kit and not planning on painting it, not planning on putting in some work into it, you are going to be disappointed with this kit. And at this point, as you guys are seeing it now, it's not that great looking of a kit. It's, it's pretty plain, that red plastic is pretty ugly, but this is definitely a kit that needs some love, but it's a really cool design, so I think it'll be totally worth it to put some time into this to make it look its best. But what do you guys think about the kit? Have you built any of the other kits in the line? If you have, you know, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. One thing I should also point out that I have not mentioned so far yet is that uh, this kit originally came out in 2013, so as we saw in the manual, this is like just a recolor version of it being like the second kit in the line. The original version came out 2013 so it's now an eight-year-old kit so that is something to take into consideration as well I suppose but if you guys want to check out some more mecha model kits you can check the link to USA Gundam store in the video description down below it's a big thank you to USA Gundam store as always for making this review possible guys I love reviewing weird or just different stuff like this less commonly reviewed stuff like this I know there's probably not a whole lot of reviews of these kits around on YouTube so I love being able to do that and share this information with you guys and USA Gundam store makes that all possible guys so definitely show them some love the link and the coupon code for y'all to use is down in the video description so check that out thank you all so much for your support liking the video commenting subscribing all that's greatly appreciated until next time i hope you're all having a great day i'll see you later bye bye